that in fact, if we have medical officers who are employed by us, or who are retained by us, and not willing to give you first class service, then get rid of it. Uh, you know, we, we should be just at it. So, me, it, it, it is as simple as that. Okay. Now, one of the options of this is that the issue sometimes arises um, between, in terms of the difference between when a police officer comes for a regular visit um, as opposed to when he comes for a visit in terms of as a result of, of injury or, or illness at work. And uh, sometimes there's a bit of a disagreement in terms of, of the level of service or, or time of the service and, and who should pay for the service, etc. So it's really something um, that your president is going to have to progress in terms of ensuring and then track whatever officers that, that you use that is clear to them what the responsibilities are is clear to you, what the responsibilities are also. Um, when I met with the commissioner of the issue in terms of officers visiting the particular age, um, I said to him that in fact there is now, I believe, a, a protocol in the system um, where police officers who are injured on duty should, should be given, um, you know, for service, but within the reality of terms of what else is happening um, in the capacity of the time. In speaking to the commission of the police, we are having a challenge in terms of the, the quality of a person who goes back and forward um, to injure a rat. And I think you would appreciate that there are certain minimum standards that we have to adhere to. Um, we certainly not going to recruit someone who comes with a history of drug abuse. We said nothing. We put someone who comes with a bit of a history. So it's a bit of a challenge um, for us at, at this point in time. And, and, and it challenges me slightly because really reflect um, what is happening with the society as, as a whole. Um, although I've also challenged the, the, the Commission of Police um, in terms of, of up in the IP in terms of, of going back into the community, going back into schools, and and showing um, that in fact that policing is, is multifaceted, that there are that there are several different career paths and maybe in, in so doing um, try to attract many more of our, of our young people. Um, but I frankly am not optimistic um, because when I when I go out along the ground I don't get a sense that lots of our young people are interested in policing at that time as a career. And it's more, as I said, it's more a sad reflection on our society because it's, it's really peer pressure. It's not cool to be a police officer in, 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 in some places, uh, in our communities, and I, and I know that you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. Um, so you have a guy who is he, qualified, there's exactly no reason, he's not employed, and there's actually no reason to say to him, but in fact, I know where you can get a job, given your qualifications and, and given you know, your other skills, etc. And he says no, that he's not interested in joining our ranks um, for no other reason than the fact that given where he is, um, that for him it will not be cool because he's, you know, um, given where he is, etc. Um, I, however, don't want for us to reach the stage, uh, or rather, I don't believe that we've yet reached a stage where we should start with outside of our shores um, to, to further the um, but I think it's time to join that. I said to the, the Commissioner um, that in fact that uh, let us give it one last push in terms of trying to recruit more of the own people. And if that does not happen, then we have to go further for sure. And one of the first things that, that I asked was whether or not there is a systematic um, maintenance program in place. I have received a maintenance program um, from um, from the office of, of home affairs, or from the office in terms of how we will look at maintenance going forward, um, so that in fact we will not wait at the buildings are falling down and then try to address them. Um, as you very well would, would have heard me say in the past, um, there are plans to have a, a few new police stations. There, there, there's plans to have a new uh, police station at Bell Plain, um, uh, at King Garden. Um, as I said, we've been married to the world of Houston and one of that building. In fact, I'm, I'm meeting with the Minister of Finance uh, sometime next week um, so that we can put together a plan in terms of how we 
I actually get these um, new station finance. I'll be very disappointed if in fact we don't start one or two of them during this coming financial year. Um, so as as Attorney General and like Commissioner and your President said, um, I'm I'm concerned about the accommodation and I will do my, my utmost to ensure um, that in fact that we're we now have four accommodation at that this is a a deviated I have visited a few police stations officially. I have visited a few unofficially um, so that I can you know, uh, see what's going on first time. And um, so that when I walked into to Black Rock a couple of months ago, I immediately said that we need to do something about, about this. I, in that regard, is where I want to commend you um, for being able to survive um, in some of the not most um, friendly conditions um, for working. And one of the items that came up naturally was the whole issue of, of your accommodation. And within our economic realities, as you would have seen, um, we have started Black Rock, in fact, we should be moving across the street um, from the Black Rock Police Station to temporary accommodation by the end of this month. And I say temporary, you're going to get in the contest because it's probably going to be good for a couple of years. Um, given the fact that we're going to have to at least, if the plan is to construct a new station here, um, and we have to go about the process of acquiring some land behind the existing police station, and of course, then putting together a plan, etc. Um, but from what I saw of the building where you're moving across to, and from what I, I, I saw in terms of the plans for the person of, of the building, um, those of you who work at, at the Battle of Police Station now, and those of you who will be going there um, in the future with a fast time in much improved uh, facilities. So, um, in Boarding Hall, again, work is started in, in Boarding Hall, I, I believe that the match support and and the police station itself is on the going of the person as, as I speak. And the officers that we were assigned to relieve temporarily. Um, so there's some dislocation at Port of Power. Um, again, the plan is that we're going to construct a new station at, at, at Port of Power. The land is owned by the government for our data it's, it's an easier fit than to purchase land somewhere else. In, in, in terms, I, I say that because I know that, um, that in, in some part of the feeling is that in fact that we should take the police station further into the community as opposed to the voting hall. Um, but voting hall is, is in fact a, a, an easier fit. Um, and, 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 and in particular, when I, I actually think about myself to have a look around uh, around the St. George. And I, I I believe that in fact that reconstructing a, a new station at Port Hall is probably the, the easiest and more realistic proposition. So the plan Board of Order does in fact that we're going to come, we're going to build it and come forward um, so that once this refurbishment is finished, um, we also will return to Board of Order that we will start the construction of the new station um, from the back and, and come forward um, so that in fact we still have operations at Board of Order.